Ladies Handmade. This is a podcast all about knitting, sewing and creating your own handmade wardrobe. You can follow me at BB Handmade Dress on Instagram. Um, I'm now the same on Ravelry and pretty much everywhere else I'm sure you can find me on the same things. So I'm Stevie in case you didn't know already and we are in the summer, it's August and it's been very very busy. <laughs> so I have been away for the last couple of weeks um, visiting family at home in Bristol and also we went up to Norfolk for a few days which was lovely. So there's been lots of knitting happening. Less on the sewing front but I do have some things to show you. So that should hopefully please some of the sewers. Sorry it's been a little bit quiet recently. So I have two FOs for you today. Well, an FO and a ho. So the first one, so I was lucky enough to be a tester for Yarnia Designs for Hannah and also for Molly of Molly Klein Designs. So this is Molly's first. I finished this while we were in Norfolk um, and managed to get it blocked and everything just in time for the deadline. Um, it's a really lovely pattern. It's called the Dainty Dots Cowl. Um, and here it is. I've knit mine in John Arban in the knit by numbers and it's KBN 23. It is a four ply pattern. I didn't use all my yarn. I was trying to use as much as I could but in the end I gave up because I would have had a cowl as long as my body really. It's massive. But it will be super snuggly in the winter. It's 100% Falkland Merino. It's a very lovely, simple uh, yarn over pattern over a few rows and yeah, it's lovely. It is now out on Ravelry as well. Um, Molly is seriously lovely if you haven't ever encountered her. She is so sweet and she's got a gorgeous shop on Etsy. Um, but this is also for sale on Ravelry. So yeah, Dainty Dots Cow. I don't know if this is going to be one that I... Um, that I keep for myself or whether this might go in the present pile. I think it probably will go in the present pile, although I don't know who will like it or want it from me. I've got some family that aren't very knit worthy. They're not particularly bothered by handmade things. So I will have to give that a bit of thought, but I really, really would like to give this one away as a gift. And it is perfect for gifts, by the way, guys. It is only one skein, not even one skein of, um, fingering full ply and yeah really easy and mindless to do once you get used to the pattern. The next FO is a hoe. This one was another test knit that I've done for Hannah of Yarnia Designs. Um, Hannah is lovely and I was really sad because I couldn't make it to see her and a few other people in Bristol on Friday and I'm definitely next time I go down I will uh, do that but yeah she had some socks that needed testing so here is one of them I have started the other um, but it's quite an involved pattern and I just needed a little bit of a break these are the rose hip socks I'm putting on my hand so you could see the front it is a gorgeous gorgeous charted design and you've got a little bit of interest on the sides and then it's stuck in it on the bottom and then on the back you have a lovely little back texture so I'll put them I'll pop them on the sock blockers now because I have sock blockers ah I bought some they are massive I don't know if they're the right size but um, I bought them at wool on the X which I will talk about in a minute because I've had lots of mm, I've had lots of Yarny adventures recently. I didn't present them to you on the blockers to start with because I want you to see the front texture and with the blockers it's a little bit more difficult to see that. Uh, the yarn that I used, there we go. The yarn that I used is Nitpick Stroll in Dogwood Heather and the heel and toe is a hand dyed mini. I dyed, I just chopped a few blobs of dye on too and uh, came up with this which I quite like I don't know that I would dye it up again simply because it's very similar to some other people's yarns and I don't want to 
and stuff on anybody else's toes. So yeah, there's those. Um, the stroll was gorgeous to work with, as was the, the hand dyed. Um, I found it quite involved. It's quite a um, an involved pattern. I wouldn't say if it was your first sock, it's ideal. It was my first toe up sock as well. So that also melted my brain a little bit because I'm so used to doing cuff down. But it was okay and I just took it in my stride and just, you know, read the instructions. The instructions are brilliant. Um, I struggled with the bobble initially on the, on the um, middle of the foot, but then Hannah was kind enough to do a video, which is now on YouTube, um, and she has it for right-handed and left-handed knit knitters because she's a left-handed knitter. Um, and once she'd shown me with the video, I was away, and it was super easy. It's worked over a few rows, so it's... I'm not going to give away the pattern, but yeah. So it just takes a little bit of thinking. Um, I really love the result. Everyone, I was knitting it while I was at home in Bristol and my mum and dad commented and my brother commented and my aunt commented on how beautiful they were and that they couldn't believe somebody would spend the time knitting such beautiful socks. So um, they're a great pattern. Hannah has them on Ravelry right now, um, which is exciting. And I can't wait to do a few more things for her because I really really love her designs and I can't wait to get finished with the second one so I can wear them exciting yeah so that is my second fo um before we get on to whips I've got a million bits of admin to do so admin wise um I am lucky enough to be part of uh, the full prep cal this year so I'm helping running it with Salapalooza. Um, so, so excitingly, I am part of the full prep cal this year. Um, so it's going to be a knit along where you knit anything you want to for fall. So autumn, where we are in the UK. Um, I'm doing that with Elizabeth of Salapalooza Knits and Rachel of Knit and Knitability. Um, you can find us all on Instagram, but you can also follow us on Ravelry. I have for this occasion actually opened up a Ravelry group. So if you're not in the Ravelry group, it's BB's Handmade. I don't know if I've put it under BB's Handmade Dress or BB's Handmade. If you search for BB's Handmade, you'll find it. Um, yes, I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for asking me to join. It's been really fun making plans and things about what I'm going to knit for the full prep cal. Um, at the moment I'm counting my Zweig. Um, it started on August the 1st and I'm not sure we've got an end date at the moment. So if you fancy joining and knitting along with us please please do. It would be so much fun and it's quite an open cal so it means that you can knit literally anything that you think that you're going to need in the autumn. With that admin out the way let's move on to whips. Whips wise I have got my second rose hip sock. At the moment it's a toe. It's not very exciting so I thought oh, there's no point in showing you that. Um, I also have a very 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 fin nearly finished object and it's really annoying that it's not finished but um, I had a few issues. So this is Something you haven't seen in ages, actually. This is my co-book hat from Caitlin Hunter, who is Boyland Knitworks. And I, last time you saw it, you I literally had ripping and that was it. So I left it in my mum and dad's house <laughs> uh, while I, last time I was visiting. And so I picked it up when I went last week, week before and so I didn't do very much of it when I was there but in the last couple of days I've picked it back up again and I've very nearly finished it. Here it is so far. I don't know what happened, it is huge. I knit the biggest size but I didn't think it'd be that big. I've, the problem is I've knit a couple of hats recently and they've just been too small and it's really annoying <laughs> that it will do small so I was like with this one I was like right I'm knitting the largest size because clearly my head is gigantic and I need to knit the biggest one it's not that big <laughs> and I was really conscious 
that I was going to run out of yarn. Here's how much I've got left. This is the Mole View um, DK. I'll put the name on screen below because I can't remember what. Oh, in fact, I've got ball bands. It is. There we go. The Welsh Mule is this one. So this is a BFL um, and a Welsh Hill Breed. And it is a DK. There's 200 metres on the ball. I was knitting it and I was getting, I got to kind of here and I was knitting it around and around and around and I needed to do another section around um, before I started decreasing and I was like, dude, this hat's going to be gigantic. Also, I was a little bit concerned that I didn't have enough yarn. Um, I'm holding this double with her veiled lace in the same colour. I don't think they have a colourway name. I know it's dyed with madder, which has made it this gorgeous pink. And it's knitting up really, really nicely. Um, I'm loving that every now and again, I'm getting a, a flash of darker pink. So this bit went without a hitch up until kind of here. It was looking huge, just huge. And I was like, I've not got a lot of yarn left. I'm a bit worried about this. Um, I could have weighed the yarn and done the maths, but I didn't. So I started decreasing, I did three rows of decrease all in one go here, which might make it look a little bit peculiar, but I'm not too worried. And so I've just done another set of decrease two rows back and I'm just gonna knit straight for a bit and then just start to finish it off because it's not quite as long as I would like it to be. Um, but when I put it on, I was like, oh, it's okay. It's all right, it's not too bad. It is, as you can see, kind of huge. Um, but I'll probably wear it kind of there. So as you can see, I can probably decrease and and sort of be done really. But I'm loving the pattern. The pattern is amazing. Um, it's the first Caitlin Hunter I'm doing where I've knit nearly all the way through. The chart is easy. Um, put your markers in obviously to know where you are on your chart because some of the um, cables cross over and you need your markers in. Um, but I love, love, love this pattern. It reminds me of kind of like art deco-ness. I don't know why. Um, the bobbles are super easy. They're one row bobbles which is fab. I like the little, there's a little twisty thing in there that um, makes your bob makes your Bobbles is hard to say. Makes your bobbles more pronounced um, on the fabric, which I also like. I kind of went a bit off road from about here, where I started doing my decreases early. Um, so I'm not sure I've got 100% what the pattern says I need on each row at the moment, but I'm just gonna decrease and decrease until I'm sort of at this point, I think. and have it be done. I was hoping I'd get it done before the podcast but I wanted to podcast this morning because the light's better. So yeah, that is my Cobra Cat. It's very nearly done. It would make a nice cowl as well if you just kind of use the pattern and knit it. Just a thought. I also have my Zweig. Um, I haven't done very much on it, I've got to be honest. I'm The increases at the back are annoying me. Not in a... I think it's my fault, I don't think it's anybody else's fault, but um, they're just, I don't know. And then I've seen others and they look exactly the same. So I don't really know why I'm sort of worried about it. Um, I will pick it back up and I will do the lace. I was really tempted to rip it back to nothing and then start again, but I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna persevere. Um, I think it's because my make one lefts and make one rights, I'm much better at make one lefts than I am make one rights. And I think I fudged it a couple of places and it's just annoying me. But it's at the back of my neck, so am I really going to know? Probably not. I just need to get through the lace and then I've got, I'm going to do plain stock in it. I'm not going to do the X's that you have on the little cables. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do plain stock in it. And yeah, see how it goes. So I haven't worked on that, so I'm not going to show you it because there's no point. You've seen it last week. Uh, the other things that I am working on, I cast on, you may have seen on Instagram stories. I don't know, if did I put it on my Instagram? I think I did. Um, I have started another pair of vanilla socks just because I needed something to um, 
I needed something mindless just to wander about with. So I'm using Giddy Yarns in a Hove Actually colourway, which is meant to represent kind of beach huts. And I took a photo on the beach uh, where I started them, because I sat um, on the beach near home. And we're very lucky, we live right near the coast, so we are right sort of 10, 15 minute walk from the beach. Uh, so I sat there and waited for my husband, uh, we're going out for lunch, so I just started these. These are just a vanilla sock, 64 stitch. The only difference with these is I've started doing a slip stitch pattern on them. I don't know how easy it is to see, oh yeah you can. So I've just slipped every fourth stitch uh, on the colour change. And I'd seen a few people do it and I was like, oh it looks so cool, how did you do that? And everyone's like... Dude, you just slip stitch, it's not hard. It's like, oh, okay. The first one I did screw up, <laughs> I've got to be honest. Um, I started slipping too early, but I kind of like the effect, to be honest. Excuse my, there you go. It's, yeah, I started slipping in the blue and not so much in the yellow. Um, but I might keep it and I might do it for the second one as well because I kind of like the density of it compared to the others and then there's my others just that little interruption in the stripe looks really cool so I've not done very much on this I've probably done so that's my progress keeper from yesterday so I've done another stripe since yesterday I was probably here uh, before we went out yesterday we went to the Thai festival in Brighton and it was fabulous um, we ate far too much Thai food and watched the Mai Tai boxing, it was really, really cool. And yeah, so that is my vanilla sock. I don't know which heel I'm gonna do. I might try an afterthought on these. I don't think I've got anything in my minis. Mm, maybe another pink. I don't think I've got anything in my minis that's gonna tone nicely, so I might have to dye up a mini to match them. Uh, so an afterthought would kind of be good for those. So, I have invested in a podcast box <laughs> because I was using my table and I kept, I've noticed I was shaking the camera. So I'm really sorry if there's any shaking because I'm placing things on there out of the box. So if you do get any shaking, I'm really sorry. Also, I know people have been saying that um, they can't hear me very well. And I'm also really sorry about that. I am going to try and get a new microphone um, so it's a bit easier. But I only seem to get one per podcast, and I don't think it's the same person, but um, yeah, I, I'm aware of it, so please don't um, worry, I'm on the case. I'm really sorry, the light's literally just gone as I said that. I'm on the case with the, with the, I'm on the case with the microphone and the sound. So I do try and mess about with it a little bit, but actually when I messed about with it before, it was worse. So... I record on my phone, I'm, I'm not hugely techy, I have like a pathetic little light thing that occasionally I use if I if it's sort of winter, but it's not a techy setup and I will try my best to um, sort out a microphone that will work with my phone. So yeah, there's a little bit of tech update. Anywho. I'm trying to think if there's any other things. Oh, my bracket hat. This is my bracket hat. You've seen it a million times before. I started doing the cable. I screwed it up. I'm going to start again because I just, I'm not happy with the rib anyway. And I'm really struggling. I couldn't find five and a half needles. So I used a six and trying to get this through the needles was impossible. <sighs> It's just gonna get frogged and I'm just gonna start it again and also I'm not loving um, knitting from a piece of paper I normally the way I normally knit is I normally have my laptop in front of me I do nice little bars so I like grey out the bits that I've done so I literally cannot get it wrong because I know that I have problems with tracking uh, things and I lose my place really easily so I try and do it on my laptop and obviously with the liner magazines I said it wrong again with the liner magazines um, you can't do that because they're paper and also I don't like the 
illustration style that they've used. Um, it's just not clear enough for me and I'm really complex, like with cables I'm finding it really complex. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to photocopy it and then I'm going to try again and I'm going to cross each row out each time so that hopefully that helps with that. So bracket hat is no more. Bracket hat will, you know, get started again soon. Anyway, let's talk about the nice things that I've been doing. I went down to Bristol to visit family uh, a couple of weeks back and it was lovely. We did a few days out. My dad has temporarily retired for a bit, so he wanted to go out and do things. So from Bristol, we used to live near Exeter. We used to live in Exmouth. So we had a day trip down there and I went to Wool on the X, um, which is a gorgeous shop. If you're ever in Exeter, um, definitely go there. So Exeter's very, very close to Exmouth. So we went to hang out on the beach and had some lunch in Exmouth and then drove into Exeter. My brother loves a guitar shop there. So I had to go to one on the X and they were absolutely gorgeous in there. If you saw my Instagram, I did a lovely photo with the ladies. We were chatting for ages and my poor dad was sat outside <laughs> on his phone for far longer than he needed to be. Um, but yeah, so I bought a couple of skeins there. They are their hand dyed. They had lots of really lovely stuff, including kind of yarn tart and um, various other hand dyers. But I wanted something from them. I also got my slot, my sock blockers there, and um, because I knew I was going to need them for the test knit. So I bought two skeins there, and I inadvertently worked out I've I match my top. Um, so this is their silk merino. So it's fifty percent superwash merino, fifty percent silk four ply. Uh, it's 400 meters and it is hand dyed by them. So here's this color, this is Tutti Frutti. I don't know how limited her colorways are. Um, I meant to ask, but I think she just does a little bit of hand dye on the side and then has a little wall of her own hand dyed. But this silk is gorgeous, really lustrous, really gorgeous. And I bought one to go with it. And this is the same 50% um, superwash merino, 50% 50, 50 silk. And this is petunias. I love that word. <laughs> Are you one of those people that loves words? I love ridiculous words. Whimsical is my favorite word, but um, yeah, I love a good word. Petunias is a good word. Um, so yes, it's this kind of pinky purpley and they go quite nicely together. They play nicely. So I might have to do something with them together. Um, I haven't bought silk for a little while. That's a lie. <laughs> I totally have bought silk. Um, I bought silk for from D Stash, didn't I? So I've got uh, some neutral silk colors that might go, but I don't know, a two skein shawl of some description could be kind of funky. So there's those ones. Then I had some tits up collectives, which finally arrived, yay! I only bought two, but I did buy a sweater quantity of one of those two. So let's start with the one I didn't buy a sweater quantity of. Um, it's Giddy Aunt Yarns, and so this is their um, tits up. Did they have a particular name? Oh yeah, if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out. Sisters are doing it, is what they called theirs. I love the orange in it, it's so cool. So this is just their Giddy Aunt sock. So this is 75, 25, 425 meters. And yes, I love it. I've been waiting for it to come back in stock and I had to jump on it when it came in. I kind of wish I bought more because I really like the color. Um, I don't know what it's gonna go in. I don't know why I should say that I've got plans for things when I totally don't have plans for things. So yeah, that was the Tits Out Collective from Giddy Aunt Yarns. Not to be confused with Giddy Yarns, they're two separate dyers. Um, Giddy Aunt I met at Unraveled and I've bought a skein of their DK, which I've had for ages, which I'm ready to cast on into something. I don't know what. Um, it's called Moody Ruby, it's really pretty. Anywho, moving on from that tangent, 
another good word. Um, I have Beehive Yarns. This is the one I bought a sweater quantity of. So this is Beehive's Bee Sting Edition, which I love. Um, so this is her Audrey base, which is a 7525, 425 metres. And here's hers. It is much more speckly. And it's amazing the amount of difference from using the same recipe, the differences that you can make. You can see they kind of tone together, but two different dyes, two totally different takes on it. So I think that's really such a, it's so cool, it's so cool. So yes, those are the two Tits Out Collective. This one I bought, I think I bought four skeins of, because I think it needs to be a jumper. I don't know what jumper. I just know that I've got enough for a jumper. Yeah, so when I was in Bristol, going back to my story time, I went to Alternate Universe, which is quite close to where mum and dad live, and I thought, oh, well, I'll message a few people and see if anyone's around. Sadly, everyone was meeting up the week after the week I got home. Um, Becky Norman from Bird Box Podcast um, happened to be around, so it's lovely. I went to the uh, the Sunday knit afternoon that um, they do at Alternate Universe, and yeah, we had a lovely afternoon. We sat there, we met Kim. Um, weirdly, I went to school with Kim, and I didn't know that. <laughs> It's weird how this world works, isn't it? Um, we thought we were in the same year, which would have been totally weird, but we weren't. We were just about, I think she's a little bit younger than me, so she ended up as the oldest of her year below. Um, so that was really weird, but lovely. And Kim is lovely. If you get a chance to go to Alternate Universe, I know I've said it before, but please do. Um, it's a lovely shop. She's only open, I think, Thursday to Sunday. Um, but they have like an... All all afternoon, um, near afternoon on a Sunday. So me and Bex went to that and it was lovely and it was amazing to meet her finally. Um, we chatted for ages and I was hoping I was going to drive back um, this week to see her and Hannah from Yarnia Designs and um, Kate from, she's Kate Viv on Instagram and I couldn't make it and I felt really really bad um but I will definitely be down there next time and the next time they're going to bath I am 100% there because I'm desperate to go to um a yarn story and dye bath so thank you so much all those lovely people that I met um so including Kim and Bex I obviously bought yarn at alternate universe this is just turning into a yarn podcast and not really a knitting one I'm aware of that and so I need to chill the out <laughs> with the yarn. So September I'm gonna try my hardest not to spend too much money. Okay. So alternate universe. Um, I really wanted to support Kim and she has some gorgeous yarn. She has um, a limited edition base for Stranded Dye Works because she's friends and went to uni I believe with um, Amy of Stranded Dye Works. So she carries her Sanctuary base, which I have knit a Come What May shawl out of the um, Legless Flamingo colorway that I bought last time I went to Alternate Universe. And you can find that on my Ravelry page and probably on my Instagram as well. So I had a little look and somebody was doing, was trying to put a fade together in the Sanctuary and I was like, oh, I love all those colors. Um, so I picked up three. <laughs> they aren't a fade, they're just three that kind of tone together nicely and I thought, wow, I could maybe use them together or maybe not. So this is the Sanctuary base, which is the 8020. So the 80 is the BFL and the 20 is a bamboo. Okay, it's fingering weight is 400 meters. This is Shiner, which is this, it's almost a lavender gray probably the best way to describe it. I've seen people make jumpers out of it and it looks amazing. Um, so yeah, you can only get Sanctuary at Alternate Universe. 
so it is uh, definitely an incentive to go in and check it out she has loads of colors all the time um yeah so i bought shiner i bought i think this is glissard yeah glissard which is beautiful look at the purples in it i didn't on the screen i didn't really know it had pink and purple speckles but in real life oh and i love this color and i wear this color a lot so i thought those two yeah they're nice together and then the third one i bought was nougat which i've been desperate to find for ages and she's constantly sold out of and beck said this is probably um her favorite strand of dye works color and i can totally see why i'd love a jumper or cardigan in this so that is nougat so the three of them together are quite nice i really love those two together so they could be a three scheme project of some description. Um, I don't know what yet. So I also um, bought some pixie yarn and pixie yarn are um, from sort of near Cheddar. I don't know if that's a helpful description. I know exactly where you're from. <laughs> so this is pixie yarn. Um, I had seen uh, Becky knit with one of the colorways and I was like I need this in my life um a lot of the skeins were very different so trying to find a lighter skein was a bit tricky but I bought 22 which is her, on her fairy base which is fingering 75 25 merino nylon 425 meters this is 22 I'm assuming Taylor Swift maybe had something to do with the name but the speckles are crazy and I really like this and I really want to knit this immediately. It's part of the reason I'm podcasting today is because I want to cast this on. But I don't know what else. I haven't got a clue. Um, it could work with lots of other things because it's so speckled or on its own. So I don't, it could be a one skein project. Not sure. And then we had a lovely conversation about this one. This is Bristol Bell, which is also on the ferry base. So 75 25 merino nylon 425 meters sorry the skein's a little bit loose but it does give you a good indication of colors um i'm not normally a yellow person but i really really liked this it kind of reminded me a bit of um cameron's balloons funnily enough now now that i know something about it that's what it reminds me of um we had a nice conversation on Instagram about this because I bought it thinking, oh, Bristol Bell. I'm kind of a Bristol Bell because I'm from Bristol. I like it. I'm going to buy it. And uh, somebody else said, oh, can you remember years ago there used to be a boat uh, that went around Bristol called the Bristol Bell? Oh, I like, had loads of fun with that as a student. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then um, we had that conversation. And then um, she said, oh, well, Actually, I named it after the balloon. There's a balloon fiesta in Bristol and it's just gone. It's always in August. I thought it was the first week of August, but it wasn't. It was the second week, so I missed it again. Um, and she said it's named after the hot air balloon. I was like, ah, oh, that makes sense. And now I can totally see those colours in it. Um, I will, if I can find a picture of the Bristol Bell balloon, I will put it up. But yes, I really love that and I love getting yarn that is sort of geared towards local ideas or um, has kind of local names. So I've got the Bristolian yarn, not all of it, but some of it from um, Bird Street UK. And now I've got Bristol Bell and I've got Hove Actually. So I'm representing both my, uh, both my cities uh, in yarn. <laughs> Bit weird. This one is a bit of a weird one. We were driving back from, I think we were driving back from Devon and we accidentally drove past an alpaca farm <laughs> and I was like, oh, alpaca farm? And so we drove in and we had a look and they were totally gorgeous. It was just, I can't, it was called, I can't remember what the place was called, but the online store is alpaca stuff. And they had yarn! So I bought one skein of pure alpaca. Uh, it's 100 grams of Aran weight. 
this is going to be a hat of dreams i don't know the meterage and i did ask and she said she didn't know either because it's a cooperative that um gets all the yarn done for her she just sends her fleeces over so this is a hundred percent alpaca from devon just in a in a white colorway it's so soft and I, yeah it needs to be something close to my face so i'm thinking it would make a lovely hat could make a lovely co-book again actually um as it's dk with mohair i guess that would make it an aaron so yes that i picked up and it wasn't very expensive either i think it was like a tenner for that still a great big box of yarn <laughs> i'm not i can't show you all this time i just i can't but the things i can show you um i was very lucky to get a lovely message um from kelly of lay family yarn who you all know i love her yarn um and i signed up to her clubs and i talk about her a lot and she said could she please send something for a giveaway and i was like uh yeah of course you can that's amazing thank you so much um so she sent a few things and it was just as i was going away to bristol so i haven't had time to podcast since then um, so I'm sorry it's taken so long, Kelly, to show this amazing stuff on the podcast. Um, she gave me some yarns for a giveaway and we are, as of this moment, three subscribers away from the giveaway. And she sent me a little present as well, which is so, so, so sweet. Thank you. You didn't need to do that at all. Um, she sent me summer bouquet. Um, which is on her 7525. I have unskeined it, so it is a bit of a mess. Um, but here you go. Oh, summer bouquet. It's so beautiful. Lots of beautiful splashes and neutrals, which she is so good at. She is so good at speckles. I just think it's subtle, but in a really gorgeous way. I think it will knit up beautifully. So thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I really appreciate it. I did do a little happy dance and possibly might have had to, you know, accost the paceman. <laughs> I actually was driving on my way to Bristol as I saw him going down the road and I stopped and I pulled up, I parked up and I said, do you have anything for me? Do you? And luckily this was in it. So I took it to Bristol and opened it there. So it was like an extra gift. So thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to show you now, I'm going to leave the rest of the yarn for next time because... I have loads and they're online ones so they're not kind of they're not sort of things I've purchased recently as I said um, we are three subscribers away from the thousand subscriber giveaway so I thought I'd show you the three skeins of yarn that I'm going to be giving away I think it might be fun to I can't decide so I would really like it if you could leave me a comment on YouTube and so in the down bar below for this particular episode and i would like you to tell me what you are going to make for the full prep cow um you get an extra entry if you uh join my ravelry group which will be at bb handmade i think or bb's handmade dress it's either or if you type in bb's handmade on um Ravelry it comes up anyway but yeah you get an extra entry if you um, sign up to the Ravelry group which is new and exciting and I don't know what to do with it but I'll try our best um, and I have three skeins of yarn to give away so I might do three winners I think I'm gonna draw three winners um, yeah that's what I'm gonna do so we have the amazing yarn that um, Kelly from Lay Family Yarn donated, which is the fourth Earl. Oh, it's so hard not to keep this. So this is the fourth Earl. I know this was part of her afternoon tea club and then she released it, I think. Um, Kelly, if I'm totally wrong, let me know. Um, but yes, it is beautiful. So that is giveaway prize number one. The second is my first order of Herps Black Regina. And this is Napoleon, the cake that conquered the world. So it's a really lovely neutral and it's got some speckles in it of kind of orange and blue. It's rather gorgeous and it actually goes, tones rather well with the fourth Earl. Um, I'm gonna give them away separately. So you could win the Herps Black Regina. 
And the third one I'm going to give away is Jelly Beans Yarns. And so this one is, I know she's recently changing her base. So I don't think you'll be able to get this base after she's sold out of everything. So it's kind of a bit more like, ooh, special. And this is the Orchid colorway. This is 7525. In fact, all of them. No, not all of them. So the Lay Family yarn is 7525 Merino Nylon. The Jelly Beans is 7525. And this one's 425 meters. This one's 400 yards. And the Herbs Black Regina is her Hazel Soft Sock. So this is 80% extra fine merino and 20% uh, she said polymid, so I guess it's a nylon. Yeah. So I'm gonna give away those three skeins of yarn. Oh, it's so exciting, it's my first giveaway. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> so um, leave me a comment down below with what you're gonna knit for the full prep cow. Um, what you're knitting now in general and you could definitely shoehorn it into the full prep cow I'm telling you now and um, an extra entry if you join my Ravelry group so I have a bit of sewing yay not the sewing that I said I was gonna do but sewing nonetheless um, I have almost finished my McCall's cardigan it literally just needs um, some hemming and then it's done. So this is a McCall's pattern. I'll put it on the screen because I have forgotten which one it is. Um, I basically just had to cut the shawl collar out again because I'd only cut one lot. Um, it's very similar to the Blackwood cardigan I'm going to make. But here it is. Whoops. It's fairly basic colour wise and everything, it fits nicely, um, I'm not going to do a huge amount with it because I'll show you it once it's totally finished, but it's kind of a shawl collary type thing, um, yeah, it's nice and neutral, I like to have things over my hands so you can see it's kind of, um, I'm going to hem it that way, um, it's going to be perfect for autumn and definitely for work so I'm happy with this I know it's fairly neutral and I know it's fairly boring but that's kind of what I need right now so yeah there's that one that's almost finished just needs hemming out pin then I started something I've been dying to do for ages and I don't know what's stopping me and it's almost finished because I started it yesterday um, that is a J. Lee pattern. It's 3245. It's a, um, luckily it has a lovely little, it's like a cami, like a racer back cami. And I had some, some, oh, I keep wanting to say yarn. I had some fabric left over from my, I made my husband a t-shirt at Christmas. So here it is so far. I'm just putting in the arm binding, so I just need to do the arm binding, the neck binding and a hem. And it's done. So that's the front, there's the back. Uh, the fabric was Fabric Godmother. Um, it's like a space dye, does it, do we call it a space dye? It's like a mull. It's really pretty, um, but I had some left over. So I thought I'll make one of those. And then once I've got the pattern down, I will make myself some more. Uh, it's a bit of a whistle stop today. Sorry about that. It's been a bit. Um, I still have loads of yarn to show you, so I will show you next podcast. Because um, hopefully I won't buy any more after that. And so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, so don't forget then to put your full cowl plans down below for the giveaway. Um, this is the thousand subscriber giveaway, I should say. Um, thank you so much if you have already liked and subscribed um, please do if you haven't already and make sure you put your comment down below um, yeah so I hope you all have a lovely rest of the summer I am back to work in a week and a bit um, but hopefully I will have a bit more knitting to show for it after um, for the next podcast a bit rambly today sorry about that um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Have a lovely week.